Well, good morning. It is good to be here worshiping with you on this Sabbath morning. I will tell you that I thoroughly enjoy coming to Laguna Niguel to visit your students. I thoroughly enjoy coming and visiting with Mrs. Cuevas, Mrs. Boniqua, and Ms. Gonzalez. When I generally come to the school, the students are, at least some of the students are generally outside playing, particularly the youngsters as they're learning to get along as they play. <laughs> as I go into Mrs. Maniqua's class, they are generally doing math. Isn't that right, Mark? Yeah, that's right. Um, and when I go into Mrs. Gonzalez's class, they are generally programming robots to do certain activities on their robotics board. And so I really enjoy being with you today, and I know that the Spirit will bless as we talk and we read Scripture together and we look at a very familiar story that you may look at it a little differently after we talk about it today. I invite you to open your Bibles to 1 Samuel chapter 24. Jesus told many parables, but the three most famous parables are of the lost coin, the son, and the sheep. And in those parables, we learn that God is seeking the lost. But there is also stories in the Old Testament that also teach us the same thing. And today we're going to look at that story today. And it is found in 1 Samuel 24. Again, it is a familiar story, but perhaps you will see something a little different than what you have seen it in the past. Let's get right into it. Let's look at the first seven verses of 1 Samuel chapter 24. It says, Now it happened when Saul had returned from the following the Philistines that it was told him, saying, Take note, David is in the wilderness of En Gedi. Then Saul took 3,000 chosen men from all Israel and went to seek David and his men on the rocks of the wild goats. So he came to the sheepholds by the road where there was a cave, and Saul went in to attend to his needs. David and his men were staying in the recesses of the cave. Then the men of David said to him, This is the day of the Lord, of which the Lord said to you, Behold, I will deliver your enemy into your hand, that you may do to him as it seems good to you. And David arose and secretly cut off a corner of Saul's robe. Now it happened afterwards that David's heart troubled him because he had cut Saul's robe. And he said to his men, the Lord forbid that I should do this thing to my master, the Lord's anointed, to stretch out my hand against him, seeing he is the anointed of the Lord. So David restrained his servants with these words and did not allow them to rise against Saul. And Saul got up from the cave and went on his way. Let's pray. Father God in heaven, in just the few moments that we have together, may the Spirit guide and direct. May our ears be open to hear the teaching of this day. May the teaching be clear. We thank you for we pray this in the lovely name of Jesus Christ. Amen. You see, this chapter begins by telling us that Saul has just been pursuing the Philistines. And if you have read chapter 23, you know that it is a miracle that Saul was called away to follow the Philistines because he was about ready to get David. His army had surrounded David. But all of a sudden, word came of what the Philistines were doing, and so he had to leave. But we also see here in this first verse that Saul has spies everywhere because it says that it was told him where David was. 
Now, I encourage you sometime, maybe today, go to YouTube and search for Caves of Engedi. You will find that these caves are in a wilderness area far, far away, and they are very difficult to get to. Very difficult to get to. But I'm not only that, there are these large caves where there is water, running water. And so it was a perfect place for David and his men to be hiding because it was a place of safety, but it was a place where they could get water and substance. And so Saul brings his army of 3,000 men and they are outside of this cave as Saul goes in the cave. Now you can begin to think and, and as the story tells us in the scripture that the men, David's men began to sing this is the day that the Lord has made because there is Saul. There is Saul. God has given us Saul. Get him. That's what the scripture tells us. Wait a minute, David says. And so David only cuts off a portion of his robe. But then he feels bad about it. He feels bad about it because this is the Lord's anointed. This is who God has ordained to be king. I cannot take matters into my own hands. And so in verse 7, when it says that David restrained his servants with these words, the Lord forbid that I should do this thing to my master, the Lord's anointed, the Hebrew word is not translated very well in English. It says that David tore apart his men. Now, I do not think he did it physically. <laughs> he did it verbally. How dare you suggest that I lay a hand on Saul? How dare you? And so he restrained his men. Now, I find it interesting that for us in, in our human um, condition, I think I would have been with the 600 men of David saying, the, look at what the Lord, the Lord is giving Saul into your hand. Take action. But there is something about being anointed. Now, the adjective uh, for the word anointed means to be consecrated or made sacred, often involving a ceremony. And that is something that we are going to be doing uh, a little later on uh, today. If, if it's used as a noun, the person or people chosen or declared chosen by God. Hmm. So Saul was certainly had a ceremony, and certainly he was chosen by God. I want to pause just for a moment from the story and to think about for us. I would like to suggest to you that humanity is also anointed today. Because we are anointed by the blood of Jesus. When Jesus came, he died for all. His sacrifice is for all. The most famous of these texts is John 3.16. And it's been referred to very many different ways, even this, this afternoon, this morning. You know, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. Because of love, God's love, he gave. We heard the story with the children's story. 
because of the parents' love for Marco, they gave Marco Tiffany, the dog. God's love gives. God the Almighty, who lovingly gives his only son to, re to redeem us, men, women, children, so that we might live forever with him. We too have been anointed by the blood of Jesus Christ. Because he has chosen us through the blood of Jesus. And so for David, he is talking about a ceremony. He is talking about God picking Saul. What I would like for us to consider and think about that each of you sitting here, your neighbors, your co-workers, all are, are anointed. The difference is believing. Believing. All right, let's get back to our story. Eight, verses 8 to 12. David also arose afterward, went out to the cave, and called out to Saul, saying, My lord, the king... And when and Saul looked behind him, David stooped with his face to the earth and bowed down. Now, I could imagine David's 600, 600 uh, men army, when Saul is leaving the cave, I could, I could kind of see them going, Whew. well, that was close. And then as Saul walks out, then they see their commander, David, doing something strange. He's walking out after them. David, what are you doing? Verse 9, and David said to Saul, why do you listen to the words of men who say indeed David seeks your harm? Look this day, your eyes have seen that the Lord delivered you today into the hand in the cave and someone urged me to kill you. But my eye spared you and I said, I will not stretch out my hand against my Lord for he is the Lord's anointed Moreover, my father, see, yes, see, the corner of your robe in my hand, for in that I cut off the corner of your robe and did not kill you. Now, and, and know, and see that there is neither evil nor rebellion in my hand, and I have not sinned against you, yet you hunt my life to take it. So he holds up a corner of the robe and says, see... Hey, Saul, look what I got in my hand. Oh, I got a corner of my robe missing. See, Saul? I could have killed you, but I didn't. Because you were the Lord's anointed. However, I want you to understand something. And this is where we really begin to see how God's infinite love for Saul. This piece of garment represented something far different to Saul than it did to David. To David, it represented, I could have killed you. So why are you chasing me? I wish you no harm. So stop chasing me. That's what this represented to David. Now to Saul, okay, yeah, ah, but this is not the first time that Saul has seen something torn. Do you remember that story? It's found in 1 Samuel 15. When the kingdom of Israel is foretold that it's going to be torn away from Saul. The story is, is that Samuel is there with Saul. Saul has disobeyed the Lord. He was told to do something with the Amalekites and he did not do it. He did it what he wanted to do. And so what happened is... Samuel says, you have disobeyed the Lord. 
the kingdom is going to be taken from you. And Saul reaches out as Samuel is turning to go and tears the coarse portion of Samuel's robe. And he is left with the robe. And he is reminded that the kingdom is going to be given to someone else. David does not know this information. David says, this means I could have killed you. I could have hurt you. But to Saul, this means that the kingdom is torn away from me. Let's go on to verse 16. So it was when David had finished speaking these words to Saul that Saul said, Is this your voice, my son David? And Saul lifted up his voice and wept. Then he said to David, You are more righteous than I, for you have rewarded me with good, whereas I rewarded you with evil. And you have shown this day how you have dealt well with me, for when the Lord delivered me into your hand, you did not kill me. For if a man finds his enemy, will he let him get away safely? Therefore, may the Lord reward you with good for what you have done to me this day. And now I know, indeed, that you shall surely be king, and that the kingdom of Israel shall be established in your hand. Now, how did Saul know that? There is nowhere in Samuel where it is announced that David has been anointed as king, as the next king. There is nowhere. There is nowhere where it is recorded that people knew that way back when, when David was a lad tending the sheep, that he was anointed king. It's not there. You will not find it. So the question is, how did Saul know and be able to say, now I know that you shall surely be king and that the kingdom of Israel shall be established in your hand? Two ways. The first way is found in Patriarchs and Prophets. In Patriarchs and Prophets, it says this, after evil-minded men have engaged in doing and saying wicked things against the Lord's servants, the conviction that they have been wrong sometimes takes deep hold upon their minds. That is Saul. He's been saying all kinds of things about David. However, the Spirit of the Lord strives with them and they humble their hearts before God and before those whose influence they have sought to destroy, and they may change their course towards them. The Spirit of the Lord was working on Saul's heart. So, for this piece of cloth, which to David meant, I could have killed you, and to Saul recognizes that as well, it also meant that the kingdom is going to David because the kingdom is torn away from me. The spirit of the Lord is working on the heart of Saul. Infinite love of God. God is trying to win back Saul. He's trying to convince Saul to repent of his evil ways. That is the purpose of why the Spirit has touched his heart. That is the purpose, I'm going to say, as to why this piece of cloth means something greater to Saul than it does to David. This piece of cloth represents the infinite love of God towards Saul. Saul had quite a history, actually. Um, you know, reading uh, through Samuel, um, in previous, um, he ordered the killing of 85 priests, their families, and their families in the city of Nob. 
all because the priest Elimelech helped David. Saul's not a good guy. He's not a good guy at all. I count 11 times Saul tried to kill David between 1 Samuel 18 and ending in chapter 26. Saul has a history. Saul is a despicable king. He is a king that has lost his way. He has done terrible things. And yet God is trying to win Saul back. God is demonstrating his infinite love to Saul, bestowing his spirit to win him back. God's endless love towards Saul moves Saul to a humble heart to be able to recognize that David will be king of Israel. Again, no one told Saul this. Saul's statement demonstrated God's working on his heart. You know, I don't know where, you, where you're at and in, 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 in where you're sitting today from the standpoint of what is going on in your life. I don't know about your struggles. I don't know about your past. I, I, I have no clue. But I'm here to tell you this same God who had infinite love for Saul has infinite love to you as well. There are several scriptures in the Old Testament that speak of God's endless love. Psalms 136, 26, God's love endures forever. Psalms 86, 15, O Lord, you are merciful and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness. 1 Chronicles 16, 34, giving, give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His love endures forever. Lamentations 3.22, the faithful love of the Lord never ends. In scripture, this phrase, his love endures forever, can be found 26 times. And so this same God who was concerned for Saul, who had done despicable things, who was chasing David for no reason at all, is trying to win him back is the same God of today. The same God for tomorrow. God, love is infinite. You know, unfortunately, society teaches another kind of love. A love that's based on feelings and emotions. A love that does not last forever. A love that's centered in the human heart. But scripture tells us that there is a greater love than the love of human emotion. It is the love that our Father has for his children. Today, when you leave uh, this service, the deacons at the door are going to pass out a piece of cloth to each and every one of you. I hope that you will put it in your Bible. And it will be a reminder to you of God's infinite love that he has for you. Because this is what it was about for Saul. Saul. And how God was working on Saul's heart. It is a love that will never leave you or forsake you. You know, um, when I visit our, your school right here, um, I'm able to see how, how the teachers work. I'm able to um, talk with them, how they interact with kids. And um, I can tell you, beyond a shadow of a doubt, that the philosophy that motivates each of these three teachers that you have at Laguna Niguel Junior Academy 
is the things that you see up there on the screen. Is that it is a school that recognizes each child as precious to Jesus. I see how they talk to the kids. I see sometimes how the teacher will get down and talk. Your school is where students are treated well because they recognize that the children are a child of the king. And so that too is the philosophy that governs how their classrooms are organized. And I also want to suggest you a third thing. Is that your teachers here repre- are, know that the children are anointed by the sacrifice of Jesus. And so everything that they do in their classroom is trying to help provide a picture of a loving father, a God who has infinite love. And I just would like to thank this congregation for the support you have provided Laguna Niguel Junior Academy over the years. Our schools have been established for this very reason. To provide examples of God's infinite love that he has for the children. And so, this story of the lost king, a story of God's infinite love, is a story, unfortunately, that does not end well for Saul. But it is not because God forsook Saul. Throughout the story, throughout the story of Saul and David, you can see instances where God is intervening to provide opportunities for Saul to turn back to him. And so as Jesus told these parables, they all have happy endings. Unfortunately, the story of the lost king does not have a happy ending for Saul, but it is not because God is any different. God is constantly searching and looking for all who are lost. And so this morning, I would like for you to, um, as, you, as you exit today, as you get your little cloth, um, again, put it in your favorite scripture text, put it in your Bible, but may it represent the infinite love that God has for you.